let's talk about the inspector tool and what this does is that it gives you access to the actual CSS code uh, working behind the scenes. So traditionally you do have access to the uh, CSS hero, what I would call the front end, where you can simply click on an element and then right here you have access to the properties. Uh, you can then change the values of those properties. But right here, you do have the inspector tab where you would now see the real CSS code. So as an example, I'm gonna click on the CR services button right here and let me just change the font size from 16 pixels all the way to 24 pixels, right? Now, right here, if I clicked on Inspector, now you can see the real CSS code being generated. Also, while the Inspector tab is active, if I clicked on any other elements, say for example, I clicked on uh, who we are, for example, right now you will see this message asking if we would like to add this selector to the Inspector. So I'm gonna say yes. And now you can see that we now have the particular selector for the uh, who we are text. So from here, I can actually begin to write out real CSS code. So as an example, I can say font uh, size, uh, let's go with uh, 50 pixels. As an example, now you can see who we are is much bigger. I can say, okay, I'm gonna add the color and we can go with red as an example. And right now you can see that who we are is now in red. So basically, the idea behind the inspector tool is that it allows you to work directly with CSS. So if you're someone who already has knowledge of CSS and while the front end <laughs> is pretty awesome, sometimes you may just wanna work with the CSS code directly. You can switch to the inspector tab and begin to add your code in here. Now, one thing I should point out here is that if you make a mistake, while typing out some code, for example, it will notify you that, hey, there's an error. So right now you can see I've typed in some, some, some rubbish right here. And of course, the inspector tool is warning me that, hey, on line eight, uh, there is some unrecognized inputs. So I can come in here right now and simply uh, remove that. So this is very, very useful for troubleshooting because with coding sometimes, you may just have misspelled a particular word or maybe you didn't add a, maybe a semicolon, things like that. So that can be very, very frustrating. But thankfully, there is the troubleshooting tool uh, available for us to work with. One other thing you should be aware of is when you switch from the regular desktop screen size to let's say, for example, the mobile device screen size of 320 pixels, and then you switch to the inspector tab, automatically the media query will be written out for you already. So you don't have to specify that the code you want to apply right now is specifically for screen sizes of 320 pixels. Automatically, the inspector tool would have created that for you. And the same applies with other uh, screen sizes as well. So if I went with this particular screen size and I switched back here and I go back to the inspector tab, you can see right now that the screen size has changed. So just be aware of that. If you've written out some code in here and now you want to switch over to a new screen size, you come in here right now, you go with the one for five, six, eight pixels. If you want the query written out for you, just switch back to CSS Hero and then switch back to Inspector and now you will see that the media query has been written out for you. That's exactly how you can uh, navigate your way around the responsive designs with the inspector tool. Now within the inspector tab, you do have access to additional functionality. You can choose to increase the size of your text if you wanted to, or you can also reduce the size. And then right here, you do have access to the get button that will give you four new functionalities. You do have the auto select, meaning that when you click on an element, the inspector tool automatically detects what that element is, its class, its IDs, and so on. And then you have the code theme and you can choose between light and dark. And personally, I do prefer the dark mode. You could, of course, stick with light if you wanted to. You do have show colors, meaning that basically when you write out a color, uh, CSS here will automatically indicate what, what the color is. So right here, you can see, for example, black, you do have uh, black right there. And then you also have beautify code. Now, what this does is that it simply makes your code look nicer and very, very neat. So I'll recommend that you keep all these three are turned on and then for your code theme just choose between dark and light you can also choose to detach the editor by clicking on the button right here and now 
you can simply drag the editor so you know if you're idle and you don't really have many things to do <laughs> you can come in here and play uh with the editor if you wanted to and of course click on the button again and it will dock the editor back in its place and then finally down here you can choose to export your regular CSS code or you do have the more efficient methods of the minified CSS and less. Of course, there will be another video describing exactly uh, what these are. So check that out in the library. So that's how to work with the code in Spectre. And I do hope that you found this video informative.